The type of rings that are best for tension are ones that are adjustable from the top. This allows you to be able to hook your yarn around and underneath the parts of the ring. And there's really two different types of yarn tension rings. The first one is one that your yarn can wrap around, such as the neck of the peacock, or maybe the opening of the cat face on this ring. You want the hooked part of the ring facing away from you. The other type of ring is something that is adjustable from the top, but doesn't have something really to hook onto. This technique is used for rings such as the bee and flower, the wizard, the sloth, stuff like that. And the great thing about this technique is it can be used for both right hand crocheters or left hand crocheters and also both types of tension rings. And when you knit, you can use the same techniques. So first I'll show you how to adjust the ring so you can keep its shape. What you want to do first, if you're going to make it bigger, you want to just pull out just a little bit. And then to keep it round, you're just going to pull up on the top two parts. Just like that. So I just pulled up on the cat head and then the tail, just a little bit. And then if you need it bigger than that, you can just keep going. Just pull it out just a little bit more, and pull the head up a little bit more, and the tail up a little bit more. And then to make it smaller, you just do the opposite. So push it in just a little bit, and then push it down. If you're a right hand crocheter, you're going to put the ring on the left hand. So let's get the yarn in position. You want to have the end of your yarn or the part you're crocheting on the right side with your right hand and then their ball of yarn on the left side. So I have the ring on just above my knuckle and I'm going to take this yarn. See how there's an opening here and it kind of forms a hook? You're going to put your yarn around that. And this is one way to do it. Okay, so I normally will put it under there and then also underneath the overlapping part of the other side, depending on what it is. Then you want to push it down. Now you can leave it here if you want, but I like to have it a little bit lower. And then I like to have the ring slightly facing me. You can pull that yarn back so that close to your hook and then however far you feel like you need it have a nice pull on this and then we can start crocheting a little hard to do while I'm looking into a phone screen but I'm making it here now let me demonstrate a couple more and for the lizard, I'm going to show you how you can wrap it around if you already have it below your knuckle. Pretty much the same way. As long as it's loose enough and you can get your yarn underneath it, you're good. I'm going to show you one more with the cat. Now this one's a little bit different because the hook is on this side. So what I'm going to do is go underneath the tail and then go underneath the hook. When you're a left-handed crochet, you're just going to do the opposite. So when you start out, your yarn's going to be on the right side and your crocheted part or just your yarn tail that you're starting with is going to be on the left. So I'm going to demonstrate the peacock ring. We're going to put it on. Oops, I need it a little bit bigger. Pull it out. Pull it up. Up. If you were right-handed, you would put it on like this. You'd put the yarn around here and the yarn around here. But since we're doing it on the left side, we're going to take it off. We're going to put it on same whoops same direction and then take our yarn and put it around the neck first and then underneath the feathers so I'm not going to attempt to crochet with my left hand because that would be disastrous but I will show you like how it just goes through just easy like this so when you do crochet it's nice smooth tension so the octopus ring can be a little tricky. If it's on your right, it goes like this, and you have it wrapped around this one and underneath here. Now if it's going to be on your right hand, then you're going to put it underneath here and underneath this hook. Let's move on to the next type of rings, which are the ones that don't necessarily have a hook on them. These, we are just going to wrap around the yarn band for our tension. So let me first show you with the mushroom ring. We're gonna put it on. I'm 
And now I just have the yarn in between the ring band and my finger. This is one way you can crochet with it. Now, if that's too loose of tension, you can actually wrap it around one more time and it'll make your tension a little bit tighter. So it just depends on what you like. And the nice thing about these rings is you can put them on either way. So whether you're crocheting with your right hand or your left hand, you can put them on the way that you like it facing you. And if you have the hook type of ring, you can still use this technique for tension. Just wrap it around the ring band and then go for it. And then for left hand crocheters who put the ring on the right, it's going to work the same way. Or if you need more tension, just wrap around one more time. Now when you're knitting with a yarn tension ring, you're going to hold it pretty much the same way as you do with crochet, depending on which finger you'd like it on left or right. And what I like to do is go around twice to get enough tension on it. And then just pull it back if you need a little tighter. And I'm a much better crocheter than knitter, so don't mind my slow knitting here. But that's how you would knit with it. And you can use other types of yarn. It doesn't have to be just regular worsted weight. This is chenille yarn and it's a little bit thicker. So when I use chenille yarn, I just go right underneath the ring band and right in between my finger because you don't need a whole lot of tension since it's a thicker yarn. And I even make my ring just a little bit bigger, but it works just as well. You can even use yarn tension rings for thin crochet thread. What I do is just wrap it around the ring band and then wrap it around one more time. And that creates pretty good tension. Also, many customers have told me they can crochet longer without their fingers getting tired. Let's check out what they're saying. Never thought I'd needed a tension ring. Once I started using this, I was able to move faster and easier on my projects. Easy to adjust and use. Absolutely love the bee and flower. Love my new ring. I don't crochet without it. And if you haven't purchased your yarn tension ring yet, Check out my link in the description below. It'll take you right to my shop. So if this video has been helpful, I love it if you click the like button. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.